Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and this one is on three Town Hall 9 attack strategies that have a lot of room for error. And what do I mean when I say room for error? Basically, at Town Hall 9, you're, you're able to make mistakes. It's not as difficult as Town Hall 10 to get the three star. So these attack strategies, you can make mistakes you can still drop troops at the wrong time in the wrong places, but as long as you do most things right, it'll work, and these also work on most bases. So it's good if you're not the kind of person who likes to pick apart every base and have to tailor an exact army for each base. Maybe you're still learning um, exactly what troops are needed for what parts of a base, or you just want to be able to more reliably three-star at Town Hall 9. These strategies are going to allow that um, Basically, the first one I have two attacks to show for. This is called none other than the Monty G because he is the one that has been... Uh, I, I don't know if he's created it, but he's the one that's using it right now in One Hive Genesis, so I want to give credit to him. Um, one thing you'll notice is... Like I said, room for error. He drops the rage, misses the healers, pops the queen's ability. So kind of a wasted rage slash ability, depending how you look at it. Um, but like I said, so much room for error. That's fine. The attack will still go on. Um, no big deal. Basically, what you do is you have a small queen walk that meets up with a three golem kill squad. Only six hogs. Oftentimes, um, if you have a big kill squad and you get it into the base correctly, it can be a very effective strategy. So you want to start off the queen walk in... It doesn't even matter which way she goes sometimes. Of course, you want to look and try to funnel her in the more favorable direction if you can find one. But if she goes the wrong way, just start your kill squad on the other side of the base. It's a short queen walk. There's not a lot at stake. And you'll notice these healers get inside the rage spells. You have two jumps and two rages typically. And they'll heal up your golems and your bowlers. They'll do a great job. And as defenses get distracted on your tanks, like your king and your, uh, and your uh, golems, then you drop in the single hogs, um, typically bring about six of them. That's how the troop space tends to work out. But you can bring, you know, anywhere plus or minus two hogs on that. And yeah, you can see not everything is planned out. Basically, he knows I'm jumping into the middle of the base. I'm going to do my best to wreck it with my kill squad. And I'm going to sprinkle in these hogs as needed. So um, like I said, not a perfect attack, but it works. And that's what we're focusing on in this video. It might not be the cleanest attack, but it's going to get the three star. We'll take a look at one more example of this strategy. I think I may have shown it once or twice on the channel already, but I want to just give it another shout out in this video because it falls into that category of attacks that are are, are not going to have to be everything is perfect to get you the three star because oftentimes those attacks aren't worth doing just because if it's like a dragon attack you're trying at Town Hall 9 or a complicated queen walk, there's a lot of uh, possibilities where you do one thing wrong, you have one wall breaker fail, and you screw up. But by not having any wall breakers, that's already one plus, uh, especially for a lot of you guys who have wall breaker fails. I do have a video on wall breaker pathing though, if that actually is something you struggle with. Uh, so be sure to check that out if you haven't already. Um, Another example here, just start off your queen. If you know on a cleanup attack where like Tesla's are, that's a good place to start her, but just try to get some defenses. Typically, you can use one of your rages on her. Um, pretty easy funnel place. Just don't put her in a place where the healers are going to get shot down um, if she walks the wrong way, preferably, because, you know, like I said, to maintain that room for error, you want to... Uh, to have a lot of contingencies. You know, if she goes the other direction, I can start my kill squad from the other side. Just, it's a great attack strategy in that you can adapt very easily. Um, it's not like something goes wrong and you're basically screwed. You can always be adapting with this. And as the queen starts to come around the corner, already starts those three golems, lots and lots of wizards, um, getting a lot of surface area right there, all those defenses that are touching the outside of the walls there, and then comes in uh, kind of a weird split on the CC, but most goes to the queen, goes ahead and poisons that, rages up the kill squad. Now, the queen, because she's, <coughs> excuse me, because she's dealing with the CC troops, um, she lags behind and goes through a wall, so <laughs> kind of, a <coughs> uh, excuse me, um, a weird way this thing worked out because typically the queen is not going to lure the cc but um she does in this case and uh because of that the healers don't get on the golems and the king and the bowlers as they usually do uh, which kind of makes things 
a little less effective, but still sprinkles in these hogs. And like I said, even if a few, few things go wrong, such as the queen luring out the CC and shooting through a bunch of walls, still can pull up the three star fairly easily. Although this one is a little bit closer just because that was a pretty big um, unexpected turn of events for the queen not to go inside the base. So the kill squad without a heal spell, without any healers, wasn't able to get quite as far as you'd expect, but still powers through. This queen's going to get these last few defenses. Um, the healers are very powerful at the end, so make sure you don't let your queen die to anything stupid. Um, if you have to, like you saw in the first attack, if you drop the rage and you miss, or it's not going to be enough, just pop the ability. It's not that big of a deal, because oftentimes, even if you make a few small mistakes, overall you can still get the three star. So um, that is one strategy I recommend you guys practice, especially if you want to, um, you know, to not have to tailor an army for each base. That's a good go-to, and it works on most Town Hall 9 bases, and it works fairly well. It doesn't have that many precise components that you, <clears throat> you need to have down. Okay, so this next one here, going to show one attack on it, uh, mainly because it's something you guys have probably already seen. Just a, a shattered... Uh, uh, can't, can't remember the name, a Shattered Laloon, I guess. It has, um, it has bowlers in some cases, but I think it's sometimes better just to bring a CC Lava Hound because it lasts for so long, that CC Lava Hound. And oftentimes people, you know, trying to, <clears throat> sorry, a little bit of a cough today, trying to defend hogs, people are going to, you know, have the air defenses close to the queen. And even with the king walking and a bunch of wizards walking behind him, Still gets in there with his own queen because the two golems tank relatively well. And if you can just take out two air defenses, the queen and the CC, that's pretty much all you need. Then Laloon the rest of the base. Like I said, that level four Lava Hound is going to take a very long time to uh, get busted up there. I like how he's not bringing too many rages. Just that one rage for like the Expo Cannon, somewhat of a high HP area. But these hastes are what will really... Uh, be important for moving these balloons along. So focus mainly on hastes for the back end. At Town Hall 9, there's not that many high HP defenses. Um, if you get a big cluster of defenses, especially expos and more um, higher HP buildings, the rage makes more sense, but oftentimes the hastes are uh, more effective because they take up less spell space. So crushes this base even with the hiccup of the king not going inside the base. Uh, which kind of shows that this is a good strategy. We so often see a CC of bowlers bringing those clan castle bowlers at Town Hall 9, but um, the Lava Hound, especially if you don't have access to bowlers in your clan, just bring that Lava Hound in the CC, and uh, it does very well uh, for tanking for your balloons. So that's a nice go-to. Two golems, your heroes, uh, some wizards, just kind of an old-fashioned attack almost, and then back end, do the Laloon, and it can work out very, very nicely for you. Um... Okay, one more, and this one, of course, we see the two to three golem uh, hog attacks at Town Hall 9, but I want to emphasize this strategy because I think in just how people are building bases, they are so um, set on defending the typical uh, hog attack where you bring a pretty big kill squad and then maybe... 16 to 20 hogs for the back end. So oftentimes I like to see people bring more hogs and just kind of overwhelm the base because if the heroes, both heroes especially, that's a great trade and the queen are somewhat close to the outside. The queen of course is the important one and you can just come in there, get the CC, the queen, a few defenses, that minimal investment. Um, you can, four heals and Above 30 hogs can take out most Town Hall 9 bases. If you get the important stuff taken out, they can really hurt your hogs. Of course, it helps getting the king. And I said these attacks work on most bases. This might be the most, I guess, base-specific attack of the three because you don't want to have um, a situation where you have the king and like a bunch of like spring traps on the opposite side of the base. So you got to be careful about that. But oftentimes you can just overpower the base with hogs and heals if you can trade a golem and here a golem and your heroes for the defensive queen and the defensive clan castle troops. So um, the hogs kind of go across in a wave here and uh, it's kind of interesting um, how they path. But like I said, pathing doesn't have to be perfect. Room for error is the key for these attacks, and when you're sending in a ton of hogs, especially those nice level, I think they're like level 8 almost, or what's the map? We have Town Hall 9 level 6, 
I guess Town Hall 11 level set. Yeah, those level 7 hogs, I, I think. Um, they are very, very powerful. And adding those into like 25 plus of your own hogs is very difficult for a base that even has the king, skellies, um, other good defensive things against hogs, spring traps. Even then, it is very hard to defend this. Um, so if you're not able to plan out the nuances of like dropping the jump spells and kind of moving a kill squad th through the base like we see in more uh, hog attacks more often, this is a good one to fall back on because uh, it can work fairly well even if you uh, you know haven't planned that excessively for a or that extensively for the base you're about to hit. Okay, this one is a very similar, uh, version of it, it just has, instead of four heals, only two. And um, I still like the one golem approach. I think oftentimes at Town Hall 9, people kind of overbring the tanks, and a lot of failed attacks are because you have tanks sitting in the base, but um, they didn't end up tanking and all your uh, DPS troops died. So if you bring more DPS and less tanks, you can you know, have a little bit more, once again, room for error to uh, to mess some things up but still have everything turn out okay for you and get the three star. So here, decides to bring the jump and the rage and uh, the CC bowlers. So a bigger investment, but still the one golem, is, I think, is what ties this strategy together and makes it unique from a lot of the hog attacks we see. Also, sending the queen in. People tend to get fancy sometimes with Lava Hounds in the CC, but you guys have told me you don't see many Clan Castle Lava Hounds. So, assuming it's a small CC, of course, you're going to want to send your queen in to kill the baby dragon. And whatever else is in there, she's good at killing CC troops. But uh, this one only had two heals, but if you're biting off more of the base, you can definitely afford to get away with bringing less uh, heal spells. Assuming you're biting off more of it with your kill squad, that is, and leaving less for your hogs. This one was almost overkill if you look at how many hogs were left up, but um, definitely helps to have those numbers. When it comes to having more heals versus more hogs, more hogs is typically better than having more heals because what kills the hogs are the spring traps more often than the actual DPS on them, uh, as well as other, you know, like the king, other things that really you can't heal over. That's what really hurts the hogs. So having more in just gross numbers is almost better than having the extra heal spells. In some circumstances, there are exceptions. But anyway, that is it for this kind of summary of three of the uh, the go-to Town Hall 9 attack strategies. Once again, just for context, guys, uh, these are strategies that you want to use if you're not able to plan as extensive, extensively for the base or if you know, you're know worried that you're... Um, the attacks are getting too specific, you want more room for error, you want to be able to mess up, you know, maybe you've been struggling. These are things to fall back on because they have a very high three-star percent uh, hit rate, they're reliable, and um, they're not going to waste a lot of time planning if that's not something you want to do. So hope this video helped, and uh, I'll have some more content coming out soon. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bisectatron out.